Hello and welcome to this guide how to choose a gate valve responsibly, this time a bit more advanced. My name is Christian Lobretzberger and I'm the manager for product management in the Hable Austria group. In the first part, I have introduced some essentials to look at when choosing gate valves that shall last. Now I'd like to go a bit deeper. Let's start this webinar with the coating, which is vital for the longevity of a valve. Bond strength largely depends on proper surface preparation. Even if the coating looks good, a bonding test can be quite useful. Whilst GSK recommends a minimum strength of 12 megapascal, 18 or more are definitely better for durability. Fluidized bed epoxy powder coating, which is applied by Havle for more than 30 years, has proven to be more reliable than electrostatic coating especially in complex geometries with small grooves, like in the bonnet. On the small upper photo, you can see what happens if the surface treatment was inadequate or the coating itself is improper. Another vital durability aspect is the material grade of the spindle. It can be deemed to be the core of a gate valve. In Havle, we cold roll the spindle in our own factory in Austria thereby achieving extremely smooth surfaces at, uh, on the thread as well as on the shaft, where later the seals will sit. We recommend the use of duplex stainless steel due to its mechanical properties and superb corrosion resistance. A simple indicator for corrosion resistance is the so-called pitting resistance equivalent, which can be calculated by the formula shown on the slide. If you want your valve to last, a PRE value of greater than 25 is recommended. It is also wise to conduct a spectral analysis in order to find out which materials the spindle actually consists of. Not always you will find the same material that is specified in the data sheet. Spectrometers are available in most labs. A proper spindle bearing is also essential for the gate valve's performance, especially for long-term low torque actuation. Although seals hardly wear out over the lifespan of a valve, it can be a handy feature if they can be replaced just in case and even without shutting down the pipeline. For larger gate valves in Havle from TN 250 and greater, the use of axial ball bearings are recommended in order to keep the actuation torques at a minimum in the long run. In case of failure of the ball bearing, the spindle would get stuck if there is no fail-safe running function on POM disks, as in our E3 valves, for example. As mentioned in the first webinar about gate valves, the use of ball bearings can also omit a bypass for actuating the valve. Vibration damping properties? What? In a gate valve? Yes, that is a feature that can be quite useful, and I tell you now how it works. As shown in the essentials part, the ideal connection between the wedge nut and the wedge is a form fit. If you fully coat the assembly with rubber and make sure the rubber is injected in between the nut and the wedge, you will get a damping layer that still allows some freedom of play. In the lower picture, you can see this rubber layer between the nut and the wedge, which contributes to reduced vibrations during closing of the valve and also minimum wear and tear of the wedge rubber. If you're not convinced about that yet, I've got the video for you. It shows that some freedom of play is maintained whilst the rubber damps the movement, and that is proven to result in less vibrations and reduced wear and tear of the rubber. Well, towards the end, something more advanced, you might need to consult a lab to conduct endurance testing according to EN 1074. You won't regret because it really gives you an insight about the expectable long-term performance of your gate valve. If you want to avoid picking up your streets every 5, 10 or 15 years, such tests are definitely recommended. <clears throat> Make sure not to test the valves that the suppliers generously send you free of charge. It is strongly recommended to randomly select it from the warehouse yourself. By this, you can ensure an objective test result. We also recommend to conduct testing with 
250 as well as 2,500 opening and closing cycles. Specifically, 2,500 cycles will reveal the real endurance of a valve. In Hubble, we run valves on the test bench under real life conditions for 10,000 cycles and even more. Some labs also offer accelerated aging tests. For instance, the bottom left picture shows a Hubble E3 valve after 14 days at 40 degrees centigrade in water with 2% salt, after it ran 250 times on the test bench. The other valve was exposed to identical conditions, but doesn't look that trustworthy anymore. At least for me, I wouldn't like to be responsible for burying such quality in the ground just to dig it up again after a few years. And finally, here comes a summary of the most important aspect to look at when choosing gate valves. It also includes the features mentioned in the first webinar about essentials. Number one, exceed applicable quality standards for longevity. Those in the norms are usually just the bare minimum. Better you opt for valves with a proven reliability for over 50 years. Top quality ductile iron with an elongation at break of 15% is preferable for longevity. Edge protectors and valve identifiers will provide you additional safety and transparency. Connecting surfaces such as flanges should be machined thoroughly in favor of durable uh, sealing. If a bypass is needed for easy actuation of larger diameter valves, it should be deemed to be a compromise for poor design. The valve body and the bonnet should be fully coated inside and outside. A wedge guiding system with low friction plastic covered nose pieces should be opted for. Form fit wedge nuts with a thread length of minimum 1.2 times of the spindle diameters should be used. Materials in contact with the water in the pipeline shall definitely be lead free. Vibration damping properties can also contribute to an extended service life. A durable valve should have at least five O-rings with a minimum diameter of 3.5 mm. And the bonnet gasket shall interlace the bonnet bolts to, save, to uh, secure the threads from, from uh, corrosion. The sp spindle bearing and or the O-ring carrier should be fixed with a double bayonet and the spindle should have sliding discs and or ball bearings to ensure easy actuation. Duplex stainless steel is a must for the spindle material. And finally, a tight test regime for endurance should be undertaken on randomly selected valves for 2,500 opening uh, closing cycles or even more. Well, that was the advanced part of our guide, how to choose gate valves responsibly. If you want to learn more about durable valves, you can uh, and save uh, multiple of your investments in the long run, please join our webinar for total cost of ownership. Many thanks for your attention. Goodbye.